What time is it? Kindergarten, first grade. We're back again. Our Gerald McDermott stories are now in the continent of North America. They were in Africa. They were in Japan, which I guess is part of, which I guess is considered Asia. They were in the continent of Africa when we did Anansi the spider and Zomo the rabbit. They were in the continent of Asia when we did the stonecutter from Japan. And now they are in the continent of North America. We made Raven, a trickster tale from the Pacific Northwest. We made Pig Boy, a trickster tale from Hawaii. And today's story is Coyote, a trickster tale from the American Southwest. What does Gerald McDermott have to say about Coyote? From the Great Basin to the Plains to the Southwestern Pueblo Indians, all Western Native American cultures tell stories of Coyote. Coyote's misadventures and cautionary tales have instructed generations for centuries. In the story I'm about to read to you, his vanity and greed and misbehavior get him into trouble. Hope you like it. Coyote, a trickster tale from the American Southwest by Gerald McDermott. Coyote, a trickster tale from the American Southwest, told and illustrated by Gerald McDermott. Coyote, Blue Coyote. He was going along following his nose. He had a nose for trouble. Coyote stuck his nose into Badger's hole, but got bitten. Coyote wanted to have a flaming red head like Woodpecker, but his fur caught fire. Coyote went looking for Snake, but only found trouble. Coyote was always in trouble. Coyote came to a place where earth meets sky. He heard laughing and singing. He went up to take a look. Coyote saw a flock of crows. They were chanting. They were dancing. Then the birds spread their wings. They flew through the air and circled the canyon. Oh, if only I could fly, said Coyote. I would be the greatest coyote in all the world. Coyote called to the crows. Hey, let me join you, he said. This foolish coyote wants to be like us, Old Man Crow said to his flock. Let's have some fun with him. Old Man Crow turned one eye toward Coyote. You may dance with us, he said. Thank you, thank you, said Coyote, but I want to fly too. Maybe you can, said Old Man Crow. Old Man Crow plucked a feather from his left wing. He told his flock to do the same. They stuck the feathers in Coyote. Coyote winced. His nose twitched. The crows chuckled. You are ready to fly, said Old Man Crow. The birds began their slow, steady chant. They hopped from one foot to the other. Coyote joined in the dance. Even though he got out of step and sang out of tune, he was very proud of himself. The crows spread their wings and soared into the sky. Coyote followed. His flight was jerky. He tilted to one side. Since his feathers were only from the left wing of each bird, he was off balance. He fell to the ground. Wait, he cried out. Don't leave me behind. The birds returned and gathered round Coyote. We must balance him, said Old Man Crow. Old Man Crow plucked a feather from his right wing. Each of his flock did the same. Coyote cringed as they stuck the feathers in his fur. The crows cackled. Now I'm perfect, said Coyote. I can fly as well as the rest of you. Coyote had become rude and boastful. He danced out of step. He sang off key. The crows were no longer having fun. The birds again began their slow, steady chant. Coyote hopped along, flapping his feathered legs and singing sour notes. The dancers spread their wings and leapt into the air. Soon the crows were flying high over the canyon. Coyote struggled to keep up. Carry me, he demanded. The crows circled Coyote but didn't carry him. Instead, they took back their feathers one by one. Coyote sank through the air. He fell straight down. Ow! 
he howled. Coyote fell so fast his tail caught fire. He fell into a pool on the mesa. Coyote crawled out of the water. He heard laughter and saw the crows flying away. Coyote ran after them. He tripped and fell, tumbling in the dirt. Coyote went home soaked and covered with dust. To this day, he is the color of dust. To this day, his tail has a burnt black tip. To this day, Coyote still follows his nose. He has a nose for trouble. He always finds it. The end. Good job. And here's how we're going to make our coyotes. You can draw your own. You can print a copy off my blog. I'm going to make mine out of construction paper. I've got pink salmon paper for the background, the desert, and the sunset. I've got an orange piece of construction paper that looks like a flat top mountain called a mesa. I'm gonna get my sunset colored crayons, my yellows, my pinks, my purples, my oranges, and I'm just going to color a strip of clouds across the top of my paper. The mesa is made up of layers of sediment, so I will get a brown crayon and draw horizontal lines across my mesa. I'm going to glue my mesa onto my background, and then I'm going to glue the coyote that I cut out onto the paper. Before I start coloring on my coyote, I'm going to give it a few minutes to dry. So I'm going to decorate the paper around Coyote. You might want to do what I'm doing and grab a green crayon and draw some, and draw a cactus in the background. If you draw more than one cactus, they're called cacti. That's the plural. So after I draw two cacti in the background, I'm going to get a brown crayon and scribble some tumbleweed. I could get my reds, oranges, and yellows, and I could decorate his tail on fire because that happened in the story. I'll get a black crayon and draw some crows flying in the sky behind him. Once I'm done with that step, I can start drawing Coyote's face, his eyes, his black nose that the badger bit. I'll draw his mouth with his tongue sticking out. I'll color the tip of his tail black because it got burnt. In the story, he falls down the mesa and gets covered in dust. So I'll take a gray crayon and color all over his blue fur with the gray. When I'm done coloring him gray, I think I'm done. This is what mine looks like. I can't wait to see what yours looks like. See you next time. Bye. Today's pro tip, when you're painting on a vertical wall, you're going to get drips. There's no avoiding it. Uh, I like to play a game where I pretend that the drips are like Missile Command, one of my favorite video games as a kid. Paint brushes don't come with erasers. That's why your next best friend is a wet rag. Always have a wet rag ready to help you, to help you catch and erase your drips. I never start any painting without a wet rag nearby. Boom! Now it's time for some bonus points. <laughs> bonus points! Bonus points, bonus points, bonus points. You're never gonna guess what I'm gonna ask. What year was Coyote published?